I failed my test, which was 2,300 burpees, and not only do I fail my test, I just learned that the record was beaten to 5,010 burpees. Man, that was hard. Yeah. Hey. Hey. If first you don't succeed, you gotta... I'll just wear this. There you go. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the video. So get this, four weeks before my burpee world record, I failed to complete 2,300 burpees. Now my target for the world record was 5,000 burpees. So for me to fail at 2,300 burpees, man, that was hard. That was hard mentally and it was hard physically. So I'm heading to the office right now. I'll tell you exactly what happened, how I failed, and I'll show you my exact process for dealing with failure, which hopefully can help you go through your own failures. Because let's face it, if you're not failing, you're not trying anything new. All right guys, see you in a sec. When I signed up to beat the Guinness World Record for the most burpees in 12 hours, the record actually stood at 4,500. So I figured 5,000 should be a good target based on my own training experience. I thought it was attainable, but obviously it was, it was a big stretch. My final test before the record attempt was four weeks out. Obviously after that, it was more about recovery. Four weeks out was my one and only test and I had to do 2,300 burpees in five hours. That's, and I am looking down at my sheet because I'm not that good at math. <laughs> so, so that's 460 burpees per hour. And 460 burpees per hour is 5,520 burpees in 12 hours. So clearly that's above what I was aiming for, but I figured I could not maintain such a high pace, you know, fatigue and all. So I said, you know what, if in five hours I'm able to complete 2,300, then I imagine I'll be able to complete 5,000 in 12 hours. So, so that was kind of my logic behind the, the final test. And it started off amazingly. Things were going great. I felt unstoppable. I, I could see the record, I could smell it, and I thought, you know what, there's, there's no way that I'm not gonna, gonna beat the record. So for the first two hours, things are great. And then all of a sudden I start feeling a bit of pain in my abs. But nonetheless, I just I keep going, keep going, keep uh, working hard. And at some point my body said, you know what, enough. So, so my abs started cramping. And I look down and I see one of my abs, my, my upper left ab is sticking out. I, I thought it was like two inches. It was, it was sticking out by so much. And obviously we always exaggerate, so it was probably more like half an inch but it, it was sticking out, that, that's for sure. And immediately I fell to the ground in complete pain. If any of you guys have ever had muscle cramps, man, you know they hurt like hell. If you have any tips on how to get rid of them or if you had any cramps, let me know in the comments. I'd be curious to, to see how you guys deal with it if you have them. I, I tried stretching, I tried massaging it, and it wouldn't really get better. And then at one point I said, you know what? I have to reach my target of 2,300 burpees. I have to reach it because it's my last test. It, it's, my, it's my final test before the attempt. So I got back up, started doing burpees again, and it lasted for about probably 20 seconds. <laughs> so I did five burpees and that was it. I started cramping again, and now more abs were sticking out. And I know when we look down on our body, we like to see abs sticking out, but trust me, that was not a good looking six pack. So I fell to the ground again in pain. GF who was there, who was taking care of my nutrition planning, tried to help stretch me out, try to help massage my, my abs a little bit to, to get rid of the cramps, but nothing would help. Nonetheless, for about an hour and a half, I kept fighting against the cramp. I kept, uh, kept getting up, doing more burpees, probably three or five at a time, and then the five hour mark arrived and I had, uh, I was I think 121 burpees short of my target of 2300 burpees. So as you can imagine, that was, that was pretty hard both mentally and physically. Physically, I, I was pretty broken up. Mentally, I knew that I would not have the chance to attempt another test like this before the record. So I knew I was going to go into the record attempt with a failure on, on my record. And to make matters worse, GF texted me the next day and he was like, 
hey Sam, did you uh, hear about a guy breaking the, uh, the current world record? And I was like, well, no, I did not hear about that, but you can't just drop a bomb like that and not tell me what's going on. So obviously I went straight to Google and started uh, doing a bit of research. I found out that a guy in Michigan, if I'm not mistaken, had unofficially beat the world record. Now unofficially simply means that Guinness has not yet approved the record, but he still had completed 5,010 burpees. Now remember, my target was 5,000. I was, all my preparation for the four months leading up to the, the, the final test was for 5,000 burpees. I failed my test, which was 2,300 burpees. And not only do I fail my test, I just learned that the record was beaten to 5,010 burpees. Man, that was hard. Like I, I was, I was in a tough spot. By the way, a huge congrats to anyone who attempts to beat world records and who successfully beats world records. It's, it's not a competition at all. Most records that are broken or that, that uh, people try to break, it's for good charity, for good causes. Like myself, we raise money for sarcoma. I know the guy who beat the world record previous to mine, that was 5,010. He also raised money. Congrats to any of you guys. Like I said, it's not a competition. It's, it's really about bringing awareness and money to charities that we hold close to our hearts. So now the record that I have to break is 5,010. What should be my new target? I can't aim for 5,015 burpees. I mean, the guy just did 5,010 burpees. So if I want to beat the record, I don't, don't just want to beat it by five. Clearly, that's just my ego speaking, but nonetheless, I kept thinking, what should be the new target? And I tried to do a bit of math. I don't know, somehow ended up with 5,300 burpees. Out of nowhere, there's no logical answer for why, but I, I figured, first of all, it pleased my ego. <laughs> and, and second of all, I figured if I do cramp up or if I get injured or if anything happens during the event and I'm, my pace is bringing me to 5,300, well, at least I have a small buffer. So that's why 5,300 became my new target. At that point, I was actually really obsessed with, first of all, healing my abs and then finding a way to prevent cramps. Thankfully, I was surrounded by a crew that was absolutely amazing. Alex, my trainer, introduced me to Tom, who is a massage therapist, and I started having a few treatments with him right after I cramped, and he really, really helped me out. Obviously, after that many burpees, it was not just my abs that, were, that needed work, so he really helped with my back, my hamstrings, and my, how do you call them, my calves. <laughs> Thankfully also my osteopath Eric really helped me out and he even introduced me to a guy who he said, this guy's crazy. He works with crazy people like you who do these attempts, uh, these endurance attempts all over the world and he will definitely be able to help you. So I met Seb and a few minutes later he said, you know what, lay down, I'm gonna try something on you. And he says, remove your shirt, or I remove my shirt. So he starts touching my abs, I, okay, you know what, I'm gonna try something new. So he takes out this these weird equipment that looks like it's, he's gonna torture me. And so I look at him and I start laughing and he says, yes, I know it looks weird. And he says, yes, it is going to hurt. And so he grabs these metal clips and starts digging into my abs. It was so painful, but it was so effective. A few treatments with him and I was, I was ready to go. I was ready to do burpees again. So now that my abs were healed, I was on a mission to prevent muscle cramps from happening in the first place. But that's a whole subject on itself, so I'll talk about hydration and how to prevent muscle cramps in a separate video. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss that one. But for now, let's go back and take a look at my process when dealing with failure. So the reality is, we're all gonna fail if we try something new, if we get out of our comfort zone. I know I'm gonna fail a bunch. I'm gonna fail with this YouTube channel a lot. So how can we learn from our failures? How can we develop a process for learning and improving? My experience has taught me that the answers are typically quite simple. Doesn't mean they're easy, but they're simple. And when you fail, there's no secret recipe. What I've learned is you have to attack it head on. You analyze what happened and you attack and you become obsessed with turning that failure into a success. What did I do this morning? What, that morning, sorry. What did I eat? What did I drink? What was my warm up? What was my pace? I looked at everything and a few things popped out that I needed to improve. Clearly my abs, which I healed. The next step was the flooring. So the environment in which you are in matters so much and that applies to life, not, not just to burpees. If you're hanging out with people that party all the time, chances are you're gonna party all the time. If you hang out with guys like me,
chances are you're gonna end up doing a lot of burpees. So my environment was not the right one. I, I was training at a gym that had softer mats. The event was gonna take place at Centre XPN, which is an amazing gym. And their floor is a bit harder, which is, is great for lifting. But for doing burpees, it's not that great because clearly you're landing on your, your hands a lot. And for 5,000, over 5,000 reps, you know, my wrists that were gonna take quite a hit. So, so that was one of the lessons I learned. Another one was the, the floor accumulated sweat. The gym where I was training, the flooring was a bit softer and somehow it absorbed the sweat. So that helped me. The gym where I was gonna do the event, the, the, the floor, sorry, didn't absorb the sweat. So it just, there was like this big pool of sweat. And I was, I was doing burpees, I kept slipping all over the place. And obviously if I'm slipping, my core needs to, to work to stabilize myself, with, which probably didn't help and also cause some of the cramping. So remember this, failure is not final unless you let it be. Whenever I fail at something, I go back to my process. I look at what happened and I improve and I make something better out of it. That way failure is not really a failure, it's just a bump along the road. At the end of the day, I succeeded, I beat the world record. And you know what, without that small bump on the road, which at the time was a pretty big failure, I probably would not have beaten the record. Whenever I fail, I try to remember Michael Jordan. He was cut from his basketball team and he credits a lot of his drive and his motivation for succeeding to being cut from his basketball team. We all see these great figures and we assume that they were all successful. Look at these people, if you go back, they all failed. That's my personal process and I know it's not easy, but it is simple. If you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching guys, I really appreciate it. Hopefully it provided a bit of value for you. If it did, could you please hit the like button and make sure to subscribe so that you can see my future videos. Thanks again, guys.